The time is 167 before the common era. It's been about 400 years since the forcible movement of people from the land of Israel through a series of conquests. And then there was some repatriation. Basically, it's been business as usual, as the region is now a mess with a Hellenistic or Greek Syrian state called the Seleucid ruling the area. Remember Alexander the Great and how he died young? Well, his generals divided up his empire, and this little plot of land we think of as Israel landed on the western side of one of the generals' claims. Then the Seleucid ruler Antiochus IV thought it would be a good idea to force the Jewish people to eat animals they found offensive and also make their priests offer sacrifices to a different deity with those same animals. By the way, this Seleucid ruler liked to be known as God Manifest or God Illustrious. In any case, he outlawed most of the things that made Jewish people feel like they were Jewish, and after he had a pig sacrificed in the temple and desecrated it, he sent his people out into the local villages to forcibly make the Jewish people worship the way he thought it should be. That's when Mattathias, an older priest who lived about a day's walk from Jerusalem, started bringing the metaphorical hammer down. This is the hammer that got his son Judas the name the Maccabean, or Judas the Hammer. Judean Hammer kind of simulates all of this going on, some guerrilla warfare. It's what I would call a two-player card-driven game where you have some area control stuff going on. However, in this area control game, you are going to have to do certain things to win that are different depending on whether you are playing as the Seleucid Greeks or the Maccabeans. Let's talk about how to play and win the game by gaining the most victory points. To set up the game, you have the central play mat and a sideboard. Give your deck of cards a quick shuffle and give four cards to each player. Gather your faction cubes, purple for the Greeks, and green for the Maccabeans, as well as a matching die for each. Place a cube of your color on each matching square space on the board. Don't forget the victory points track. The Greeks start with a slight advantage. That's it for setup. The Maccabeans decide who the starting player for the round is, and then each subsequent round, whichever player has less points chooses then. A round is played by playing cards for either the Ops value, shown on the upper left hand side of the card, or for the event. If you play a card which contains the opposing faction's event, you just get the Ops. However, then you hand the card to the opposing player, who may choose to play the event after your turn. For this reason, it can often be advantageous to go second in the game. Each player will play a card, possibly hand it to the player who might play the event, and then the other player takes a turn playing a card. Play continues like this until both players are out of cards and the round is scored. What can Ops points do though? You can recruit or move. When you recruit, it will be different for each faction. The Maccabeans recruit in one of three ways. Units simulated by cubes, may be placed in empty or Maccabean controlled cities in regions where Greeks don't have control. What is control? Simply having an area to yourself or having more controlled areas in a region. The, there are five colored regions plus Jerusalem is considered a region. Second, the Maccabeans may recruit units equal to the ops value minus one in a single empty or Maccabean controlled city in a Greek controlled region. Finally, the Maccabeans can recruit units equal to the Ops value minus one into a single empty wilderness area. Wilderness areas are places without cities or Greek supply centers. By the way, Maccabeans will never enter Greek supply centers, ever. On the map, these are the places with the little Greek temple looking thing at the top. Greeks can recruit units equal to the Ops value and split it up into Greek supply centers, Greek controlled cities, or empty areas adjacent to Greek controlled cities, so long as these areas are in Greek controlled regions. Greek units will always be recruited into Greek controlled areas. That's all for recruiting, and if you forget it, it's on the game map right here. Movement is fairly straightforward. You can use a card to move units up to the ops value plus one. For example, a two ops value card lets you move three units. Units must move along roads, which are shown with these double lines. If units move into an area containing enemy units, they must stop. After all units have completed movement and any ambush has been resolved, a battle will occur in each space with opposing faction units. Units moving into a space are considered a group if they are ambushed, even if you are going to split them later on. What's an ambush? It's a unique type of combat the Maccabeans were especially good at. Just ask Major General Chaim Herzog, who wrote extensively about it. It's possible several battles have been initiated by movement, Resolve these, then events may be used on cards. When Greek units move into an empty area adjacent to the Maccabean unit, the Maccabeans may attempt to ambush and stop the Greeks. An ambush is always declared after all Greek movement is decided. 
However, a successful ambush will prevent the Greeks who are ambushed from completing their movement. There may be only one ambush per Greek turn. After Greek movement has been declared, the Maccabean player may announce this legal ambush. Ambush cannot occur where a battle will take place. Reveal the top card of the deck and take note of the combat modifier. Combat modifiers are important for regular battles too, but right now, notice if it is a Maccabean combat modifier. If it is, the Maccabeans automatically win. Number of units don't matter in an ambush as to who wins. If the Maccabeans win, then all Greek units that went into the area stop in that area. If Greeks win, movement continues as it was announced. Additionally, if the Maccabeans win the ambush, each player will roll against the casualty chart shown here and see if any units are lost. Units are only lost in a successful ambush. Finally, if all Greek units are eliminated, the Maccabeans now move into the ambushed area. Otherwise, the Maccabeans stay put. If you didn't catch it before, Greeks cannot be ambushed when moving into areas already occupied by Greeks. Resolve those battles that might be occurring. First count each faction's unit. This is your starting strength. The person who moved in is the attacker. Flip and reveal the top card of the draw pile. Add the shown combat modifier to the relevant faction's strength. The card immediately goes into the combat ambush discard pile on your sideboard. Attackers will win ties. Next, each faction will roll a die to see if they have any casualties. The winner will only lose a unit if they roll a 5 or 6. The loser automatically loses one unit and may lose more if they roll a 5 or 6. This effect may cascade for the loser as each 5 or 6 forces them to lose one more to also roll again. Lastly, after all losses have been removed back to the individual faction supplies, the attacker must move to an adjacent legal space if both factions still have units in the contested space. Units in your supply are referred to as your stockpile and are not removed from gameplay. They are a limited resource which may run out being placed on the board or they may be held in reserve in your stockpile. As you get ready to end the round, each player should check supply. No area can support more than three units at the end of any round. Remove any beyond three and place them back in your stockpile. The Greeks also have to maintain supply lines between their supply centers and their units. Any Greek area which cannot trace an uninterrupted line of supply along a road back to Greek supply center loses one unit. Maccabean units can cut off the Greeks. Each region will grant victory points to the faction controlling. To control a region, you must have more cities, not wildernesses, than an opponent. Jerusalem counts as a region too. Tied regions do not score points for either player. After awarding victory points, add all of the cards from both discard piles to the draw pile. Remember that cards played as events are removed from the game via the burned and removed pile and will never return to the game. You don't actually need to burn them when you remove them. After shuffling the draw pile, count the cards before drawing new cards. One way for the game to end is the draw pile having less than 12 cards. The game can also end the round a player reaches 12 points on the score region's phase. Whoever has the most points wins. In the case of a tie, the Maccabeans win. Robin David has created an excellent, quick to learn, and approachable game that draws on history. By the way, although Judas Maccabeus died in the Battle of Alessa, his family went on to be known as the Osmonian Dynasty, which expanded the Jewish nation for about 100 years before Herod the Great helped assimilate the region into Roman control. Without the Judean Hammer's exploits, we wouldn't have Hanukkah and we wouldn't have this fine game from Robin. Let me know what you think of the game and happy gaming.